Hey everybody, this is going to be a pretty quick video about how we configure Windows 10. Uh, people have asked us how we do it so that they can get similar results to us for their machine usage. We're also going to explain a little bit of the tests that we use to benchmark the machines that we get, just give you a little bit of insight into our process. Apologies for the video quality, we were recording directly onto a screen so that you would get a machine fresh out of the box. Obviously there's no way to properly screen capture that, so the video quality is going to be a little bit shaky and a little poor. Uh, hopefully it'll be okay though. Here we go. So as soon as we turn on our PC, the first relevant screen we get to is the Get Going Fast screen. And as soon as we get here, we immediately start turning off all the settings in the Customize Settings section. Uh, generally, these things are just a bit of a drain on your PC, and there's no real need for them. Then in the Customize Settings, we like to turn all these guys off, except for the Send Full Error Report and Diagnostic Information to Microsoft. We actually went back for that one because that is a useful one sometimes. And then in the next section after that, the further Customize Settings, we like to leave these things on as they're generally pretty useful. So we've actually gone ahead and time-lapsed the next section for you. And we do pretty standard things like add our Microsoft account. We're going to go ahead and set up our PIN for you next. The one thing that we like to change that some people don't is that we turn off uh, the Windows Cloud service. Generally, it's just kind of a pain in the ass, and we don't find that it really adds much value to us. We also turned off Cortana, as you may have seen there. So she's not super useful all the time, and sometimes you don't really need her, um, as we find we don't. Um, this whole waiting process that they get to, there's lots of great features and hi and all this jazz is really annoying, but here we are. So we're just going to go ahead and let this guy go. Now that we're here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start the update process because there is a lot that is probably left, especially if you have a PC that's been sitting for a few months. You can see we have definition updates and all sorts of other stuff. And we've turned on Task Manager to see what's happening as this goes down. Now that we've let all the updates run uh, completely, we let the machine restart and just kind of left it alone for that time, we're going to go ahead and turn off these notification settings that you can find by just kind of following what we did right there in the search. Um, these can sometimes be really bad depending on your machine, and they can really slow down your performance. Now that all this is out of the way, the next thing we like to do is clean up the disk. Um, and again, this is only if you are comfortable getting rid of the Windows backup that has just been um, kind of installed on your computer. Um, we are in this case because you know this is just a test machine, so we're not too concerned. So we're looking to find the old Windows, and you can also do this through programs like CCleaner, which is fantastic, and we use it a lot. Um, this kind of a machine should be perfectly fine using CCleaner, but sometimes we find that low-run machines struggle with CCleaner and the Windows. You can see here that we found the five gigabytes of the previous Windows installation that we're going to go ahead and remove. We're going to use CPU-Z as well as Hardware Monitor to figure out what is inside this machine as far as brands and the actual specs. We use Crystal Disk Mark to figure out the disk speed, whether it's a primary or the backup disk. We're going to use Cinebench for the processor and we compare it with unclocked and clocked processors as well. And finally, we use 3D Mark to get a gaming score for it, and especially 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra. We like to go ahead and plug these results into our spreadsheet that has already compiled all the scores. And you can go ahead and read the comments for those if you're ever wondering what scores we're using, what the standards for our benchmarks are, why we chose to do it the way that we did, anything like that. We've tried to do a pretty good job of explaining our methodology there for you. Our final test, which is mostly for fun, is to try to play Crisis 3 on the machine and see what we get. Um, it's a generally a good game, it's well known, and we enjoyed playing it, so you know it's one of the main reasons that we like it. And we'll go ahead and try to show you the video results for it, if we can make it happen. Sometimes the, some of the more budget machines do not support Crisis 3 at all, which is unfortunate, but you know that's kind of what you're getting when you go for a budget machine for maybe home purposes. And after that is all done, that's kind of the end of what we got. I hope we've been able to answer some of your questions about how we work with our machines, how we benchmark them, how we set them up, etc., etc. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to us in the comments or send us a message or an email. We'll be happy to respond and address your questions as best as we can. If you like this video, please let us know. Please like and subscribe. If you have any problems with it and want to dislike, please let us know what made you go that way. We'd appreciate that as well. Thank you. Bye-bye.